G'day everyone and welcome back to the shop. Well, seeing I've bashed you to death with CAD videos over the last couple of weeks, I thought it was time to get back into the shop and make something. So to my right, your left, I've got this Troy built uh, whippersnipper, we call it, I believe in the USA you call them weed whackers, and I've blown the head on it. So it has a double string head on this here, and you tap it on the ground and it automatically feeds out. So Obviously the plastic's not UV stable and over the years it decays from the sun and anyway it's stuffed. So I went and bought a replacement head and this replacement head here called Sabre Out. I bought it from my local hardware shop. I believe it's made in the USA and before I bought it I made sure I checked to see that it fit the Troy built uh, weed whacker. And it says here it fits 90%. Well guess what? I'm in the 10% it doesn't fit. So, what I need to do here today. Luckily, for me, they have these little spaces here uh, that you insert and you can change them depending on the thread that fits the head. Now, would you believe it? They've given me every one, but they're all left-hand thread. My weed whacker is a right-hand thread, so it won't fit. So today, I'm gonna have to go and machine one of these spaces so it's round hex, got a groove in it with a 3.8 UNF 28 uh, TPI thread in it. All right, so luckily I've got a little bit of scrap and um, hopefully I'll get it out of that. Now today it's quite simple work really, uh, parallel turning, facing, drilling, uh, tapping. There won't be any boring apart from me doing the video, which will probably be boring. Um, <laughs> then I'll need to do some simple indexing. Now for the indexing, I could put my indexing head on the um, on the milling machine, frig around tramming it in, but you know what? Um, I think for this one here, I'll keep this a little bit longer and I'll use my um, hex collet block and put a 19 mil to 20 mil collet, because this is three quarters of an inch and clamp up on it and just hit the hex on all six sides. Alrighty, so look, let's get started. I even had to go and buy a tap to do this job. Would you believe I don't have any um, imperial, very little imperial taps here in my shop. I run all metric, of course, being Australian. We met, went to metrication back in the 70s, so I had to go down and buy a tap. Now, luckily, my local supplier had one, and I'd like to point out it's the Australian made Sutton tap, um, which is really good. So they use quality high speed steel as well, which is great. And uh, I'm just lucky I got it. I think I paid $29 for it, which, is, which isn't too bad. In US dollars, that's probably something like uh, $17, something like that. Right, out, let's get into it. Let's start the lathe up and get cracking. So I've got the round aluminium stock in the three ball chuck, and I'm just doing a facing operation here. I just want to square off the front of the face. And here we go with some just straight out parallel turning. And what I'm doing here is just reducing the outside diameter and bringing it down to size. I've sped the video footage up here so it's not as boring to watch and uh, it's currently at 400% or four times normal speed. Now I'd be better off using a proper carbide tipped best suit of aluminium, not a steel, uh, an insert for a steel tip. So. What I'm checking here is just checking my outside diameter. I'm shooting for about 22 millimeters, and the reason I was shooting for 22 is because I need to form the hex. Uh, so the hex is, as I was telling you, uh, three quarters of an inch. And this is the finishing cut to bring it down to 22. Just giving the lathe a quick little clean up here so I don't have swarf going everywhere. You'll notice here that I'm adjusting the tool post, and that's the beauty of this Dorian uh, quick change tool post that I can offset it on 15 degree increments. And I'm running the lathe in reverse and I'm dropping over to the back side just to take it, uh, you know, a deburr, a little light chamfer on that part. I'll set the tool post back up to zero here and start working on the front section. 
Now I need to turn this down to a diameter of 18.5 millimeters. It is a bit of a weird size that one, but this has to slip inside that injection molded uh, weed whacker housing. And what I'm doing here is comparing the original part, which is 18.45. Now, they give you four of these and not one of them was consistent. It was anywhere between 8.4 to 8.5, 18, sorry, 18.4 to 18.5. And you can see here now with my micrometer, I'm right on the money. Now keep in mind that's a cheap micrometer, it's not a Mitotoyo. Just coming in here now with a parting blade, I just want to put that little groove in, and that groove, uh, what that does, that captures it and retains it once you push it inside the housing. Just give me a lick with my old uh, Wiltshire lathe file, and just getting rid of that blue mark off there. You'll notice that, yeah, be very careful using the rag around a lathe, you don't want to wrap it around your finger and pull your finger off. Popping in here with a little Sutton center drill and just picking up on the center. I'll change out now to a, I think it was 8.5 millimeter was the tapping size for this, a drilling size for this um, 3824 tap from memory. Now I need to drill that all the way through. Just feeding it through here now, just being cautious. This is free machine grade aluminium. You'll notice that it's not very buttery and it's actually uh, coming out in nice little chips, which is good, so it's not actually welding itself to the drill bit. Okay, I've reached depth now and I'm going to come in now and part it off. I'm just going to double check it here that I'm on length. And what I want to do is actually find that step because I can't have too much of the hex hanging out. I will have to face down the end of the uh, material later. So just dropping in here now with my ISCAR parting blade and parting that off. Now to capture this I'll just slide up the tailstock with the drill bit in it and just gently insert it. Here I'm just deburring it, breaking that sharp edge. I'll come back in now with the parting blade and cut it off. You'll notice the drill bit come in here now and just capture it like that, save it falling down into the machine. Okay, so what I've done, I've used CAD here to work out um, the size I need. So you'll see that my cutting tool is 12, so I've added it, divided by 2, and from the center offset, I need to be at 15.25. Now as I was saying, I've set the DRL and the X and Y to the centre of the part. So that will be my origin. And what I'm just going to come through, just concentrate on one side and just wind it forward and back. You'll watch the DRO in the Y. It's at 16, it will drop down to 15. I'm just taking a look at it. I don't want to be too savage on it. It's, um, like I said, it's only aluminium. I could have just taken it in one cut, but I didn't want to run the risk of ejecting the part from the uh, collet block or, or having some other sort of failure. I'll speed this up now. I'll index the collet block around um, 60 degrees at a time. Like I said, I could have put this in the dividing head, but why bother? It's simple indexing. Just use a six-sided collet block or the ER32 19mm collet. 19 to 20mm collet, I should say. And I'm really happy I put the DRO on the mill. It's uh, definitely made this machine more user friendly, that's for sure. Right, oh, here we have the finished part. And just wanted to show you that I've got a three quarter of an inch spanner and that fits on there. Bloody beautiful, I'm happy with that. Here's the original just to show you. And the original was a little bit looser than my one. So back into the lathe here, and I'm just holding it by the uh, hexagon collet block. Using a bit of hang surface uh, tap here, this tap magic stuff, it's pretty good. And just a slow RPM and just let it feed the tail stock in, uh, slide it in under its own control, and then wind it out. I had to hold the chuck on this, otherwise it wants to undo the keyless chuck. 
Righto, so what I'm doing here now, I'm parting off the end. I've, I wanted to make sure I had more hanging out so I could grab it. Once again, chamfering on the back side with the lathe in reverse. Just giving it a little tickle with my lathe file. And that is actually a lathe file. I know I've said that before in a previous video, so that's a single cut lathe file. Very fine. And I've had that for probably over 20 something years, probably 25 years. And there's my finished part. Just like I bought one. So in we go. Popped it into the housing. I'm just going to give it one good old whack with a hammer and you can see it engage and clip into that little groove that I made. And bloody happy with that. So now it's time to screw it onto the weed whacker. Now what I'm doing here, I'm putting some, I left my anti-seize at work, I took it to work to uh, put in pull studs, so I've just got some molybdenum and grease there and just ran it on the shaft. I'm using the original washer that came off it. And back on we go. Now it is right hand thread as I was saying, spin it on. Now the biggest problem you have is being able to hold the shaft to stop it from spinning. So there is a little hole in the side that you can put in a Allen key or a, a drift or some sort of pin punch. And I just gently tighten that up by hand. I didn't want to go too crazy on it. I wasn't going to strip it and back it off half a turn. Had a bit of trouble getting this string back in here, but finally got it in and wound it up. Righto, let's test it guys. So we'll go out to my backyard. I've only got a little small backyard. Um, of course I had to get the dog turn and camera, didn't I, on the footpath there that I should have picked up before I filmed. But anyway, lucky I didn't step in it. So the old weed whack around the clothesline. And uh, it's definitely Good thing now that that weed whack is back up and running and I can run the loop. Well ladies and gentlemen, that's all I've got for you today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of machining. Uh, like I said, it wasn't a very big job, but it was one of those uh, necessary jobs that I had to do to get it out of the way. So next week hopefully, or the week after, um, I should have, re should have received the brass for this little job. So I'm waiting for it to turn. I said it was going to turn up today, but it hasn't. So I'll knock that job out of the way and then I want to get onto that parallel clamp set that Doug Gray sent me. So what I'm trying to do is get together a, a compilation of videos and have them in the can ready to be released every week. And that takes the pressure off me at work and I can concentrate on my job. So anyway, that's it. Thank you once again and uh, look forward to seeing you next time on the Aaron Engineering Channel. Thank you. Bye for now.